how to calculate a formula weight. Formula weight is the weight or mass of the formula. It's the mass of the smallest unit of a compound, typically measured in AMU, AMU standing for atomic mass units. So all you're really doing is you're summing up the atomic masses for each atom in the formula. This can be called formula weight, formula mass, molecular weight, molecular mass. These are all synonyms of each other. Um, um, so it could be the mass of one atom of sodium, or for example, if they ask for the mass of one molecule of H2O, or the mass of one formula unit of the ionic compound, because remember, ionic compounds aren't really made of molecules, um, you're finding the formula weight, the formula mass in atomic mass units. It's the mass of one atom, or one molecule, or one formula unit. Um, so how do you do this? So they would give you a formula, something like NaClO3, sodium chlorate, and all you would do is you would take out your periodic table and you would just look up each element that you find. So this first element here is sodium. So notice there's just one atom because there's a sub there's no subscript, which we assume to be a subscript of one. There's one atom there. But look up the atomic mass of sodium. It's about 23. Um, depending on the accuracy, you might want to round to one decimal point here, um, especially if you have an... Um, a atomic an atomic mass that's really in between two numbers like like chlorine we'll see is about 35.45 you really want to keep a decimal place there otherwise if it's really close to a whole number it's not going to change the accuracy so much of the number so essentially the entire mass of sodium is I'm just multiplying the number of atoms times the atomic mass that I found on the periodic table and I get that there's 23 AMUs of sodium in this formula and I do that for each element there's one chlorine if I look up the atomic mass 35.5 so there's 35.5 AMUs atomic mass units of chlorine in this formula Oxygen, there's three oxygens that each weigh 16 atomic mass units, so that is 48 AMUs of oxygen in this formula. And I can sum up all of these masses and get that the formula mass or the formula weight or the molecular mass or the molecular weight is 106.5 atomic mass units. Yeah, you don't have to show your work in this this table all the time. You just can do it right in your calculator. Um, take a moment and try this example. Okay, so there's two aluminums and they each weigh 27 AMUs. There are three sulfurs, so notice if you have a polyatomic ion or something in parentheses, you want to make sure that that outside subscript applies to it, so you're distributing that subscript. There's three sulfurs that each weigh 32.1, and oxygen essentially has two subscripts. You multiply them together four times three. There's 12 oxygens that each weigh 16 AMU, and if I add this all up, I get that the formula weight is 342.3 uh, atomic mass units units. Remember, this is the mass of only one unit of aluminum sulfide. If I had more units, then it would weigh a lot more. Now, how convenient is this? In real life, are we typically looking at only one molecule or one unit? No, even small samples contain millions upon millions of atoms. For example, a teaspoon of water contains 2 times 10 to the 23rd water molecules. So it's a much, much larger scale. So, and in real life, do we deal with masses in AMU or atomic mass units? No. What do you measure out in the lab? You typically measure out things in grams. So wouldn't it be convenient, though, if I could still use the masses on the periodic table, but I can use them in grams instead. If we could just figure out how many atoms weigh the formula mass in grams, um, that would be a lot more convenient. So that's how we came up with the mole in Avogadro's number. So the mole, abbreviated MOL, is an amount of substance. Two facts to know about a mole. A mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles. Memorize that number. That's Avogadro's number named after the scientist who discovered it. Why is that important? That's actually how many AMU are in a gram. That's how it works out. Because of assigning this, and, and this is on your periodic table, this number two, so you really don't have to memorize it, but you'll use it so many times that you do. Um, because of this fact, a mole will have a mass in grams exactly equal to the substance's atomic mass or formula mass. So for example, these are two facts to know about the mole. A mole of carbon, if I look up the carbon on the periodic table, it has an atomic mass of 12. So a mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. And that mole of carbon contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms. So these are two facts to know, and two facts that we will eventually turn into conversion factors to convert between moles, grams, and atoms as well. Why is a mole defined like that? Okay, again, so for any element, the mass of a single atom in AMU 
it's going to be the same number as the mass of one mole, but in grams. So for instance, one single atom of chlorine weighs 35.5 AMU. That's the atomic mass on the periodic table, but it has the units of AMU, atomic mass units. If I scale up, one mole of Cl weighs 35.5 grams. Same number, but has a different unit because we're just scaling up, but we're able to use those same numbers due to the way that the mole is defined. Okay, and that mole contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd chlorine atoms. If for a molecule, same kind of thing. So for instance, one molecule of H2O weighs 18 AMU. There's two hydrogens that each weigh one. There's one oxygen that weighs 16. Add it together, I get 18 AMU. If I'm, instead of talking about one single molecule, I could talk about one mole of H2O, and then it would weigh 18 grams, okay? And it would contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd H2O molecules. So this lets us scale up to real world or macroscopic amounts while using the same numbers we're used to seeing. A mole will always have the same number of objects, but not the same mass. So it would be like a dozen elephants or a dozen mice. A dozen means 12, but if it's a dozen elephants, they wouldn't weigh the same as a dozen mice. There would just be the same number where they could walk hand in hand. Okay, same thing for a mole. A mole always contains the same number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of objects, but will have a different mass depending on what that object is. From here on out, we'll, instead of using the word formula mass, we're going to really use the word molar mass instead. And we're going to give it the unit G, um, grams per mole. That's what this stands for, grams per mole, because it's the number of grams for one mole. Um, and we'll give it the symbol capital M. So if you see capital M anywhere, a lot of times this stands for molar mass. It could stand for molarity in other places. Um, but this is the mass in grams of one mole of substance. It's always equal to the formula weight, which would have been an AMU, but it instead has the units grams per mole. So you would do the same exact thing as we did before. So CaCl2, there's one Ca, weighs 40, two chlorines, weigh 35.5, and I get 111, but now I'm going to give it the units G over mol. And this is going to actually let us use the molar mass as a conversion factor between grams and moles. You might want to take a moment, try the other examples just for practice, and check your work. Um, if you want, take a moment, try the, these examples. Okay, determine the mass of each one mole, okay? So we're just adding up the formula, the formula masses but giving it the units of grams or grams per mole if you prefer. And um, how many atoms are in each of the following? If we see a mole, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd objects. Okay, question, how much would two moles of C2H4 weigh? That would mean I would double this amount, it would be 56 grams. How much would a half of a mole weigh? I would half it and I'd get 14 grams. And we're going to see how we can use this molar mass as a conversion factor between grams and